In this video, I'm going to show you how to record a new simulation using the web recorder functionality that was introduced in SAP Enable Now 2305. First, a couple of prerequisites. You do need to have this plugin installed in your browser. This is called SAP Enable Now Browser Application Recorder. So make sure you've got that installed. Watch this as we go through this recording. This has kind of like a shutter symbol on it. We'll see how that changes as we progress. Next, I need to have the application I want to record open in a separate tab within the same browser window. And finally, I need to make sure that I've got the group that I want to store the recording in selected. So in my work area here in Manager, I've selected that group. Now, you might see that initially there's no record option on here. That's because you need to start editing on this group first. So I'm going to click Start Editing. And now you see I have a record option on here. So I can select Record, New Content. That'll open a new browser tab called Web Recorder. And it'll ask me what I want to record. Video I've covered separately. Here we're going to look at simulation. So I select that. This will then list all of the tabs that I have open within this browser window. This is why it's important to have the application open before you start. So I'm going to select the application here, which is actually my S4 system, and click Next. Now we're nearly ready to start recording, and I have a dialog box that gives me some basic instructions and a link to the full recording manual if I need extra help. Note that this is our plugin icon, and it's now changed to a little record symbol. So I need to come here and click on this, just like the instructions tell me. So I click on that. The next thing it does is pops up a few options that I can choose in here. I can choose what language my recording is going to be in. This dictates what recording dictionary is going to be used for the predefined bubble texts. The size here, I can select what size I want my recording to be. Here I'm going to say I want it to be 1280 by 720, for example and it will automatically resize my window to fit that size. It will resize it so that's the browser content area. It's not going to include my address bar, it's not going to include my tabs or any other toolbars I've got in here. I can enter my own size in here if I want to. If I really want this to be by 800, I can do that, then click Apply Size, and it will change the size of it for me. The option here, Show Recording Tips, is whether it's going to show those dialog boxes giving me additional help if I need it. I'll leave that selected. You can choose to deselect it here, and they won't be displayed. So now I'm going to click Start Recording. It gives me some more tips, again, unless I'd selected that option. And I'm ready to go, so I can click this Got It, Let's Go button. I'll click on that, and now I'm starting to record. Note at the top that the icon for the plugin now has a number on it. It initially shows zero. This is the number of steps that have been recorded. I can use this to make sure it is incrementing and that my recording is being done properly. The other thing you'll notice is as I move over objects on the screen, I get this highlight which shows me what object it's identified that I'm about to click on or type text into. If you've used SAP Companion, this will be very familiar to you, but all it really does here is identifies the area that's going to be my action area for my simulation. All the time that I'm moving around the screen here, all the time I'm talking and wasting, it's not actually recording anything. It works the same way real simulations do, of it'll only record actions and screenshots. So let's go and perform a couple of steps in my S4 system. I'll go to Manage Sales Orders, make sure I'm selecting the full thing I want to. A lot of browser applications, there are actually a lot of nested elements in there. You can see here I could click on the title or expand it slightly and I've got the title area. But what I really want is that whole tile. So I need to move the cursor around until I get exactly that. So once I've got that, click on it to select it. And then I just go through my application recording all of the steps that I want to. Notice that this indicator is incrementing as we go. So I've now recorded three steps. In here, I'll just record a couple of quick ones more. Click on continue there. So I'm now up to six steps. I'm going to stop the recording at this stage because you know how to do this now. So I'm going to go to here, which is now a stop button. It was a recording button. And if I click on that, I get the option to pause. So I can pause the recording, do something else in the application. For example, if I need to set up some other data or realize something was wrong, and then restart recording once I've done that. Or I can hit finish, or I can click cancel, and I'll basically go back into the recording. 
And again, I've got a link to that recording manual if I need it. Here, I'm going to say I'm finished. So I'll click Finish. And what that does is it passes me back to the Web Recorder tab. And what I'm looking at here is a preview of what I've recorded. So you can see here, this is a scrolling area. And in it, it's got my step name, my action, and this is the bubble text I, that it's going to record for me, and then a screenshot. And that's the same all the way through here. Step number, step name, bubble text, screenshot, all the way through. And I can use this to quickly check that it has recorded what I wanted to record. If I don't like it, I can click record again. It will throw away this recording and put me straight back into the recorder in the application again to make a new recording. I can click discard recording, which will delete this one and throw me back into manager. Or if I want to keep it and I'm happy with it, I'll click next. Before I do that, note the bubble text here. This just says click here and it highlights the area that I clicked on during recording. That's pretty much all you get. There's no object level recognition with this. This, is, this might be important if you want to use this simulation for other purposes. For our purposes here where we're just gonna use it for in application help for S4, it doesn't really matter too much. I'm gonna say I'm happy with this recording. I'm going to click next and it says, okay, what do you want to recall it? So I'll call it entering a sales order. I can enter a description and we'll see where that information appears in a minute and click save. It saves it and displays a confirmation message. And here I have a choice of two things. I can edit in the web editor or I can just go straight back to manager. We'll look briefly at the web editor. If I click on that, in the same tab, it opens the web editor for me. And this is where I can make some basic changes to this recording if I want to. If you've got access to producer, it's very similar to how producer works. You can see that I've got my steps down the side, my actions in here. I've got my screenshots and I can go and change the properties for this. I can enter new bubble text, etc., etc. As I mentioned, there's no object name captured. There's no object image captured. And if I go and look down at the object key, there's nothing in there. So if I want to use this to create a SAP companion for desktop guided tour, it's not going to be any use to me because it doesn't have the object level information in there. But for other purposes, it's going to be fine. So say I'm happy with that. If I've made any changes, I click save here and then just close this down. And now I need to go back to manager manually myself. If I'd click that other button to say return to manager instead of going to the editor, it would have put me straight here. Now, if I'd come straight back to manager, it would have refreshed the manager page for me and I would see it. Because I went to the editor first, it hasn't refreshed this for me, so I need to refresh myself. So I'll click refresh here or press F2 on your keyboard. It will reload this browser tab. And now you can see this is my new simulation that I created, which is called entering a sales order. It's got the text that I entered in here. And if I go and look down further in this, I will see that it captured my context correctly for my S4 system, and it's captured the SAP companion context of the product name and product version, which I'll also need if I want this to appear on the learning tab of SAP companion. Once you've finished with it, don't forget to finish editing and then publish if you want to make it available, at least finish editing, and then you can edit it further in producer if you need to, or come back to it later. And that's it, that's how it works. Very, very simple, fairly effective, Probably a useful thing for subject matter experts to use or anyone that's not on a Windows PC. This will work in any browser. But again, it doesn't have that element level context, which means that if you're in the habit of entering useful information in your bubbles, you're going to have a lot more work to do during editing to make it something more useful to your users. That was it. Hope you found that useful.